Hello everybody, this is Stringing Humor back for last but not least, first round of Group H matches. And yes, I'm sure all you lovely people have been waiting ages to get in on the action, seeing all the other competitors in each group getting in on it. But yep, it's finally your turn. So in our matches, we will see Danex Tactil going up against Arctic Warriors, Jonas Chu versus Lepok, and Random Guy 86 against Dendro Aspes. I'm just going to say Dendro. Yes, no bot teams in Group H. And then after these matches are, do are done, I'm going to just go through all the groups and give my opinions of what I think could happen. So let's go on with the first match of Group H. Alrighty then. Up first in the red corner for Danex Tactile, we have a Gigant Spiner. So it's a boy, they were <laughs> quite annoying entering the codes because for whatever reason, the code I had for the, the original the Gigant Spinosaurus didn't work. Even though I did most of the codes myself, so I know it works, but oh well. In the blue corner for Arctic Warriors, we have a Mega Raptor. And because Arctic Warriors has a Mega Raptor, that instantly guarantees them a place in the semis. No, I'm, ju I'm just kidding, but yeah. Wow, look at that power. Over 3,000. That's because this Mega Raptor is attack type. So it has a bit more oomph than the one I'm using. So expect big things from this Mega Beast. I, I, I don't, I don't want to pick favourites, but I, I'm rooting for you, Arctic Warriors. Just know that. Oh, that's not a good start, is it? Gigant Spinosaurus getting off the first hit. But that Hurricane Beat gets triggered. Ooh, this guy amount in from the Gigant Spinosaurus, and it's concentration time for me. Like, honestly, I don't like these moves. Like, I honestly was tempted to just outlaw these moves for my tournament, but they're not too powerful, so I, I can live with them. Right in the spinal cord. A decent amount of damage done and a strong star from Danex Dactyl. Like, come on, Mega Raptor, you're sucking, man. I know why it's sucking, it's because it's not mine. But the Mega Raptor finally striking back with a biting wind. Choo, choo, choo. Choo. A decent amount of damage done, given that Mega Raptor's other two moves don't do that much damage. But the Mayfly is triggered, as is Crystal Crusher. Oh, well, this is curtains for Mega Raptor as a Gaia Mountain activates. Well, it's only curtains if I get the buttons right. I mean, I will try, but if you pick these moves and I make a mistake, then that's your fault, not mine. Like, pick something like Earthquake. Well, it doesn't matter, because Mega Raptor is dead, and a strong start from Damex Tactile. Anyway, up next for Arctic Warriors, we have an Alpha Sukumimus. This might look familiar, because this was... This was the very first dinosaur that Ultimate Dino King used in my very first tournament in the early days. And well, we all know how, how that ended. Wow, Alpha Sucre has decent crit damage. Like, compared to the normal Sucre, which I think has more balanced crit damage. Ooh, as a tie. Ding, 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 ding. Ooh, a Super Minus getting off that crit. And almost taking out Gigant Spinosaurus, but not quite. Ooh, the Gigant Spinosaurus, though, getting another hit in. Cheeky little bugger, isn't it? That's a one, and that's a four, and that is a tie. But, because Gigant Spinosaurus is revival type, it gets to come back once. Ooh, could that be crucial? Nope, because the Super Mimus kills it anyway. And we are all level, but... Arctic Warriors' Alpha Suko did take a bit of a beat in. Anyway, up next for Danex Tactile, we have a Majungasaurus. And yes, 
like like the, with the Gigant Spinosaurus, he decided to use a Rage Storm. <laughs> uh, yeah, not much to say here. Sonic Blast and what else is it? Cyclone. Could be useful, could be useful. Well, it won't be any use if the Alpha Suko keeps getting off Water Swords. Ooh, and has Arctic Warrior stolen this match's momentum? Oh, maybe not, because the Majungasaurus does strike back. And drops Suko's health in the red. Ooh, I think this is curtain for Super Minus. Yep, that's curtains for Super Mimus, and Arctic Warriors is down to their last dinosaur. That dinosaur being the Megalosaurus. And well, not much to say here since it has all secret moves. A lot of power here. Definitely gone for attacking moves, Arctic Warriors. And will it play off? We'll just have to see. I mean, so far it isn't. But I suppose both... Well, I don't know, maybe Danex Tackle is more tactical. More technical, I'd say. But he is so far winning the battle as the Majungasaurus. Well, yeah, he's in the lead. And he continues to strengthen that lead with another hit on the Megalosaurus. Wow, dealing pitiful amount of damage. Oh, oh, I think that's curtains for Majungasaurus as Megalosaurus gets off a gigantic fall. Yep, yeah, that's Curtains from a Jungasaurus, and Danek's Tackle is also down to his last dinosaur. That being the Super Eocarcaria. Okay, Danek's Tackle. Nope, wrong page. Okay, four. The Awaken on four. And yep, he's gone for Goma's moveset. So, it's honestly a crime against humanity to not have Flare Sword on Eocarcaria. The same. Bam, bam, bam. Ooh, but the Megalosaurus getting off a zero-G throw. Which will deal significant damage to this Eocarcaria. And I think Megalosaurus has the highest crit damage output out of all the secret dinosaurs. But, as you can see there, its other two moves still pack a punch. Oh, wow. Megalosaurus is cleaning up, yeah. And all of a sudden, the Eocac area not looking good. Ooh, could that be what the Eocac area needed? No. What it needs is a hit. And by the looks of it, it's probably not going to get one. Ooh, it is going to get one. Ooh, we're getting close. Oh, look at this. Okay, one more. One more for the Awaken mode, but we're not going to see it. Oh, how close is this? Oh, is it a tie? Oh, it's a tie! I can't believe that! Wow! Wow, you've just witnessed a moment of history there. The first ever tie in a tournament, in one of my big tournaments. Well, well played to Danek Sactal and Arctic Warriors. A hard fought draw for both of them. I know people will be thinking, well, hang on a minute, the Eocarcaria stood back up. No, no. It's a draw because in the tie, as you saw in the clip, both of them would have died. But the game programs it so that the left team always wins. So that's why that game is a draw. Wow. Well, i got to give my hats off. That's match of the tournament so far. Well played, Danex Tactile and Arctic Warriors. GG. Right, we'll update the table and we'll do our next match. All right, we're back, and in this matchup, we'll see Jonas Chu going up against Lepoke. And well, up first for Jonas Chu, we have a Baryonyx. Quite a common dinosaur in this tournament. And yeah, not much to say here. Uh, could Ocean Panic be useful? And well, Net Crusher might not be as useful, but we'll just have to see. Anyway, in the blue corner for Lepoke, we have an Albertosaurus. And with the moveset, this is a moveset that I actually chose. Because Lepoke 
didn't know what move to pick and you usually I wouldn't interfere like I let people pick their own moves and then obviously give my opinions on them and I, I like to give like points as to where people can improve and such but I don't really like choosing moves for people but they seemed a bit desperate so I helped them well it's gonna be tough this first matchup because the baryonics will have the type advantage well you can see that straight away <laughs> Big advantage there from the Baryonyx, but the Albertosaurus does strike back. Ooh, that's a tie. Ooh, there's a tie attack from Albertosaurus there. As Burning Dash gets triggered. Ooh, a hit from the Albertosaurus. <laughs> it's going to say Alberta Ceratops. Ooh, and a Flare Sword to boot. Um, a solid start from both sides so far. But the Alberta Saurus is on top. Only just though. And well, this Burning Dash is going to finish off the Barry. And give Lepoke a 1-0 lead. And it's all thanks to the glorious moveset that I picked. <laughs> anyway, up next for Jonas Chu, we have a Super Tarbosaurus. Okay, the Awaken Mode on free. Um, I feel like this is the MVP of his team. Uh, what's his moveset? Yeah, that that Flare Sword could be quite useful with this guy. And fire Cannon. And... Oh, there we go. Burning Dash could add a bit. It could could add a big bit of damage to Tarbosaurus's strength, but we'll just we'll just have to see how it plays out. Well it's not playing out so well because the Albertosaurus gets yet another hit off. Ooh, but the Tarbosaurus strikes back with a crit. Oh come on! I thought I was gonna take it out. That's disappointing. Okay, this will be curtains for Albertosaurus. And next round will be awakening time for Tarbo. Anyway, up next for Lepoke, we have Albertoceratops. I uh, didn't really know what kind of moveset to go with on this guy. So it has gone with, like, attacking moves, really. And a bit of oomph to its strength. Anyway, back to the match. Ooh, it's quite poised so far, because the Tarbosaurus next round will have a weaken mode. And the Albertoceratops does pack a punch. Oh, that's a tie. Ooh, the Albertoceratops. Nope, Tarbosaurus getting off a burning dash. And it's awakening time. Wow, it looks weird, Tarbo. <laughs> Ooh, a hit from the Tarbosaurus, and that's Night Night Albertoceratops. And all of a sudden, Lepoke is down to Euophocephalus. And yes, that Quake Saber could pack a punch, and wow. Ropocephalus, very balanced here. Earth Barrier Light Recovery Combo could be good. This thing is a tank. Okay, don't need that now. Since the Awaken Mode has been activated. Jonas has a slight lead so far. Ooh, another hit from the Tarbo. Wow, very little damage done. Oh, is that a tie? That is indeed a tie. Burning Dash getting triggered once again. And once again, activate them. Uh, no Flare Swords though, which is quite surprising. Ah, speak of the devil. Wow, is this going to kill you, Opposephalus? Oh, it is! 
Wow! Quite a big surprise there, as Jonas Chu gets a bonus point win over LePoke. And given how the first match ended, that could be crucial. Wow, that's quite surprising, actually. Well, well played by Jonas. Uh, LePoke, mm, better luck next time. Right, I'll update the table and we'll move on to our third and final match of this, well, the final match of the first round of group games. Alrighty then, and in this final match of the first round of group games, we will see Random Guy 86 going up against Dendro. And up first for Random Guy, we have Augustinia. Um, actually looking at Augustinia's stats, it's pretty good actually. For a, like, a, for a silver dinosaur, it's really good. Um, interesting thing about it is that he's gone for all the rush moves, so Gary rushed all those cards. I don't know if, how well that will work, but we'll just have to see. Um, anyway, as for Dendro in the blue corner, we have a Ceratosaurus, the little bratty thing. And interestingly enough, this is a moveset I kind of would like to use for Mega Raptor now. I mean, it's almost the same as the one I have, but instead of Crit Block, I have Dino Illusion. I don't know, I think I would prefer Crit Block, to be honest. Maybe that's how I do, that's how I use Mega Raptor in the future. Anyway, ooh, oh, there's the Galley Rush. Oh, just Galley Rush. But Augustinia gets off the first hit. Ooh, but the Ceratosaurus strikes back. And the, the advantage of having no super moves is that you don't have to worry about type disadvantage, so even if Augustinia is to face a lightning dinosaur. You know, there's no worry of it getting hammered. Ooh, the Augustinia gets off another hit. Oh, we got Dromeo Rush and Galley Rush. Ooh, but Struthio Rush is not happening yet. Well, it's a weird, it's an interesting move set, but it's paying off so far. Looking pretty good. As for the Ceratosaurus, I'd say it's seen better days. Oh well, we don't really need that because the Cerato is going to die. Oh, it's true for your rush. I know what you all want. You want to see him get a hit off with all three of them. Anyway, as for Dendro second Dino, we have a Super Mimus. Um, not much to say here. Uh, solid moveset. You've got the oomph from Futaba Can in there, and you've got the annoyance of Shockwave, and, well, Aqua Vortex could always be clutch. But can Dendro turn this match around as Augustinia is looking pretty good so far? Oh, that is a tie. But that is not a tie. It's a Super Mimus gets off a hit. But no Shockwave. But the Taba Cannon has been triggered. And is activate then. Dendro wasted no time in taking out Augustinia and even in the score. Alright, as for um, Random Guy's next dino, we have a Yang Chuangosaurus. Um, like Augustinia, yeah, this guy has an interesting moveset with all the dive moves. Like, that's Tupu Dive, Anyanguera Dive, and Tapi Jara Dive. And like Augustinia, yeah, will it pay off? We'll just have to see. Ooh, the Yangchuangosaurus gets off a crit there. As Tapijara and Tupu Fora come in for the dives. Wow, lots, loads of damage there. So yeah, the advantage here is that the Sukumimus will not have the type advantage over this thing because the Yangchuangosaurus doesn't have a fire move. Ooh. 
Ooh, but the Super Minus does strike back. And gets off a shockwave. You know what that means. Oh, he's like... Uh. <laughs> Rock goes bye-bye and Suko will be going for a crit. Ooh, but he's not getting off, but he is getting a tile. Oh, but a Futaba cannon come in. And I think this is curtains for Yang Chuanosaurus. Okay, Super Chomp's coming in next, so... Oh, it's not dead. Wow. How crucial could that be? Well, not very, because the Yang Chuanosaurus still dies. Right, as for random guys, next last dinosaur, we have Super Chomp. Uh, whip, whip. Oh, it's random guy, random guy, random guy. Oh, wait, the mode on five. I don't think he's going to get it off. But yeah, not much to say here. Got a bit of oomph in Gatlin Spark. And I'm not sure about Lightning Axe and Electric Charge being together. But we'll just have to see. And well, the good thing is that this Chomp will have the advantage over Super Minus if it gets hit. Which it won't, because Chomp is going to take out Super Minus. Alright, as for Dendro's third dino, we have a Karifasaurus. Quite an oddity here, but it might pay off. Um, wow. Definitely has high crit damage there. That super impact could be deadly. And when does it have... Yeah, Emerald Garden Power Drain. So it seems to like draining health. Ooh, but Chomp gets off the first hit. What's this? Oh, Electric Charge. That eye looks like a dummy. Strong start from Chomp, but the Karifasaurus does reply with a super impact. And I think Karifasaurus is counter type, so it's gonna this is gonna do an arse ton of damage. Oh my god, almost killed him! <laughs> wow. And all of a sudden Chomp is on the road. Ooh, Emerald Garden there. What's this? Oh, another electric charge. Okay, that's three. Ooh, things are getting interesting. Oh, it's a tie. Oh my god, we're not going to have another tie, are we? Okay, no, Kreefosaurus is going to win. An impressive super impact from Dendro ensures that Random Guy 86 is dead and buried. Um, well, a back and forth match, really. No one really dominated and no one really got hammered. But So, yeah, I'd probably say maybe Dendro just edged it a bit. But it's not the end of the world for Random Guy 86 because he will get a losing bonus point because Karifasaurus' health was below half. Wow. What a way to end the first round of group games. I'll update the table and we'll end the session. Well, Group H certainly looks interesting, doesn't it? You have Jonas Chu up top with that bonus point win over Le Pope. Dendro, Dendro in second with a, with a win over Random Guy 86. And then we have probably the match of the tournament so far between Arctic Warriors and Danax Tactile playing out the first ever draw. Well, there have been draws in my mini tournament, but in the tournaments that involved you lot, this is the first ever draw. And then we have Random 86. Random guy 86 in fifth, claiming that crucial losing bonus point. It could be crucial. And then Lapoke at the bottom with zero. Uh, let's see who's playing each other next in group H. Oh, you're going to have a long wait again, aren't you? Ooh, this could be an important game at the bottom with Lapoke going up against random guy 86. Ooh, Arctic Warriors going up against Dendro. And then Danix Tactile going up against Jonas Chu. So there's still plenty to play for. But, <laughs> uh, yeah, let's have a look at the group.
group so far, so far looking pretty decent. I mean, I think everyone other than people in group F have claimed at least one bonus point win. So uh, which group would I say is the most open? I'd probably go with this one, group F, with everyone claiming points. And then maybe this one. And then you could just see everyone's like, win, 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 lose, 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 win, 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 lose, lose, lose. But yeah, group A is, well, no one getting losing bonus points here. But the next round for group A is, could be a cr in crucial round to see who can pull away and who can pull back. And honestly, this matchup is, I'd say this matchup is the biggest matchup of the second round. Could be such an important match because it could mean that I, with the matchups being as they are, Ibuki could open up quite the big lead on the bottom. Especially with these two playing each other as well. Of course, it could all change for Ibuki if Team Primal Carnage defeats them. And then, well, one of these is going to get a point or so. So, I feel like this is a must win for both combatants. Like, the worst case scenario for either of them is a draw. I would honestly say that. So, yeah, stay tuned for next time where we'll start off round two in Group A. And until then, this is Stranger Gamer signing out.